Okay, Coach Lubick's here. So we'll get started. First question, Sam McEwen. Hey, Matt. Um, I have two questions, but the first one is just how did you assess the overall operation on Saturday with Luke as uh, as the new starter? I did a good job. You know, at the end of the day, we won the football game. That's the most important thing. He helped us win the game. Uh, you know, he as as a first starting quarterback, your first game, you're always going to get better. And there's things that, that he can do better, like we all, there's things we can coach better. But for a first game coming out there and being calm and making some big time plays at crucial times, I thought he did a great job. How do you, you know, uh, talking to Frost yesterday, he said he had had a conversation just with you and other coaches about, we have to remind ourselves that this is a really young offense and that you have to be patient with it. I think that times on Saturday, you might have had five or six freshmen on the field at once. How do you maybe, you certainly don't change your standards, but how do you change maybe your patience and your coaching techniques when you're dealing with guys who really have are doing this for the first time? Yeah, I, we get two things. Well, number one, I think we, at one time we had eight guys on the field. We forget about that, but uh, which is exciting because we know they have great futures ahead of them. Um, you definitely don't change your standards because at the end of the day, we're going out there to win. We're going to play the best players, whether they're freshmen or whether they're seniors. And so they, they got to know what the standards are, and we got to demand their best. But at the same time, uh, we got to build their confidence. That's a big thing with freshmen is, is put them in situations where they can succeed. And I don't, I don't know if patience is the word, but I'd say more positivity, uh, making them understand, hey, these are the things, and, and you can do it, and being positive about it. Uh, I think you can still be demanding but positive, and that's something we always try to do as coaches. Jake Bartecki, KR and you. Hey, Coach, uh, how much do you know about Illinois, and what do you kind of like that you see out of their defense? And is there any where you guys think you have an advantage on offense against them? Uh, well, they're, they're a good defensive football team. Every year we play them, it seems like it goes down to the wire. Uh, they're, they're a lot like us. They're riding some momentum. They had a big win last week, as did we. Um, they're athletic on defense. They're tough. Uh, I think they take pride in not giving up big plays. They've done a pretty good job of that. So we're, we're going to have to earn everything we get. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about the challenge. But it's a good defensive football team that's very well coached. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Matt. Uh, Scott talked, I think, after the game about some of the personnel groupings and how you have a lot of those. Um, in particular, I assume he's talking about the receivers. Um, how are you seeing those young guys, Fleming, Brown, Betts, uh, coming along and and help and allowing you to do more things, incorporate them in, in more ways into the offense? Yeah, we're, we're trying to play a lot of different people, which helps us. It helps keep guys fresh. It also, uh, you know, provides some friendly competition. Um, the, the biggest thing is they've got to prove not just to the coaches, but to themselves and have confidence that they can handle the game plan and practice. And, and there's some things that certain guys do better than others. And, and as coaches, you always try to get whoever does this the best, get them in that situation. And so that's a, you know, that's a constant thing that we work on as coaches that we talk about every day. We do like the fact that we're playing a lot of guys because it keeps guys fresh. Um, we also cross train. So for example, you know, we can be in two tight ends and the second tight end can play the receiver spot. We can be in two running backs, the second running back can play the receiver spot. And so I think the flexibility our offense gives us to, to put different guys in different spots and put them in positions where they can excel, is, is, it helps us. And then the fact that we've got some young guys that are getting better each day and learning the offense, that's let us play more guys. Parker Gabriel, Journal Star. Hey, Matt, what do you, what do you learn about Luke um, when he plays an entire game rather than playing in a package here or a series there? And how did you think he handled just the sort of you know, ups and downs of, of, of being in there for every snap of the game. Yeah. Uh, well, first, I thought he handled it unbelievably well. We we knew that he was a competitor. We knew he was a, a gr he's a great athlete. He's been making plays all fall camp long um, with his feet and with his arm. But sometimes you really don't know until there's live bullets how a guy's going to respond. And I, I was very impressed with his poise. Uh, he, he stood in there. He, he improvised a little bit when we needed him to. He kept some long uh, – some, some third down, some, some second long situations alive just by, by making a play himself. Never panicked. 
um, showed a ton of poise, and not just for a first starter, but, you know, we forget he's basically a, a freshman. And so, uh, yeah, could not be more happy with what he did in the game. He, now, he's been doing that the whole time in fall camp, and that's why, you know, we chose to start him. But at the same time, it's, it's a different thing to go out on Saturday and do the same thing. And, and that's against a good defensive football team. Uh, I think people sometimes forget that. That's, those guys are going to win some games this year. That's a good defensive football team. And, and uh, it looked like he'd been in there for a long time playing football. So I was very pleased, as we all were. And just w one quick follow-up. Did you have a – I know there's been a lot of talk about, you know, throwing the ball down the field and all that. Did, when you went back and saw it, did you have an opportunity for a big play on where he got hit on the interception looking up the sideline? Yeah, we, we thought – yeah, he got – um, he got hit right when he was throwing. We thought we had. It was a wheel route. We thought we had the wheel, and I think it would have been a completion. Um, you never know. The, the corner was kind of coming off. But yeah, we did think we had one, and we we took some shots downfield. You know, especially early on. The, the biggest thing about this game, when we uh, got up early, um, that kind of changed our mi mindset too. You know, we wanted. We didn't want to go three and out. We still want to take our shots, but we also wanted to control the clock a little bit. And our defense did a fantastic job and uh, take away some of their possessions, one by controlling the clock and being able to run the ball um, and, and just being smart play calling wise. Uh, I think the worst thing you can do sometimes when you're up by 25 points is just you still want to do your offense and you still want to pick and choose your shots, but you don't want to put your defense out there without taking any time off the clock. Um, so clock management does come into play in those situations. But he, when we do call shots, we had and, – and, he, and these guys were a good defensive football team too. I mean, they make it hard to sit back there. That's one thing we notice as coaches when we study them is uh, going into the game, quarterbacks just don't sit back there and wait for routes to develop. Uh, you you got to have shots where it's either there or there's a layoff. And that's always part of our thought process anyway as coaches. And th these guys do a really good job of putting pressure on the quarterback too. A couple more for Coach Lubick. Uh, Andy Kendi, KETV. Hey, Coach. Um, you guys have been outscored by a pretty big margin in the second half. Is it as much what the defense adjusts to, or is it just a lack of execution on your part? And how can you jumpstart you guys coming out of the break? Uh, I think anytime you don't score points, you could always point to you can execute better. Um, you know, I think that question is interesting. Yeah, I think part of it, you got to look at the uh, – what the situation was. You know, we come out of halftime and you're up by 30 points. You play a little bit differently as if you're down by 30 points as far as just your mindset, scoring points, the whole deal. So I think each each game is different. I know, um, you know, Ohio State, we came out in the first drive of the game and scored. These guys would come out in the first drive of the game and scored. Uh, Northwestern, we came out in the first drive, drove it all the way down, had a penalty. Um, but we're in, we're in uh, field goal touchdown range. So our, our – whether it's the first possession of a game or the first possession of the second half, there's not a lot of difference. I mean, at second half, you do go in, you make adjustments, uh, what has been working, what hasn't, why. You talk about it really fast, but you also stick to your guns. Hey, we game plan this. This is what they're showing. This is what we still need to call. And that's, that's basically it, you know, as far as what the, the coach's mindset. Um, but yeah, we, we like to score the ball every time, score every time we have the ball in the second half, there's, there's no question. Finish up with Coach Lubick, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach, just curious, uh, when, you, when you look at you played Ohio State, you played Northwestern, you played Penn State, can you just tell your guys now, like, look, we've seen about as good as we're going to see now in the Big Ten. It's kind of all downhill from here. We, we may not see defenses as good as we faced already at this point. And, and, and what did you learn just over this stretch playing uh, on paper what appears to be three pretty good defenses? I think you're exactly right. We played three great defenses, uh, especially, you know, even including the one last week might have been the most athletic defense out of, out of them all. Uh, but at the same time, in, in this league, the big challenge that our guys got to understand that every defense is good. And if, if you don't come prepared to play, I mean, it, it, every team in this league can beat you. And every defense in this league can, can create problems. So you really do got to treat it as a faceless opponent um, and prepare the same way each week, which is number one, doing the best we can do and, and doing our job, which means no penalties, lining up right, not turning the ball over and executing. And, we, and then specifically find that our plan of attack of how we're going to attack each defense. Each, def each defense is a little bit different, but in, in this league, they're all good defenses. And the one coming up is a, is a darn good defense. So you, you got to be real careful. I mean, our guys know that we played three good defenses. There's no question. But they also know that there, I don't think there's an easy defense on the schedule. And so I, I, and, and you got to prepare that way too.
All right, thank you, Coach. We'll have Coach Shenander next.